Hello, well, welcome to chapter nine for our public speaking class. Today we're gonna to be talking about intros and conclusions. No coffee today, unfortunately, for it. It's a little bit too late in the day for that, um, that we're doing this. So intros and conclusions, probably two of your most important things in your speech. So the purpose of your introduction, you have to gain attention and interest because really no one cares about what you're talking about until you make them care. You have to get their attention. Um, gain the goodwill of the audience. So make yourself trustworthy. Make them interested in what you have to say. Clearly state your purpose so they know what they're getting into. And preview and structure out the speech. So what are you gonna talk about? What order is this stuff going to come in? So for your introduction, you actually write it after you do the body of your speech, but before you do the conclusion. Sorry, I just got a phone call, so we're gonna ignore that so we can finish this out. So like I just said, your introduction, you do it after you write the main part of your speech, but before the conclusion so that you can tie it all back together. So you do the body of your speech, all of your details, all of your research, all your information, and then you go and write the intro now that you know what you're gonna be talking about. So that way you can preview what's gonna go on in the speech. You can have a good way of getting their attention and interest based on a story that you might wanna talk about in the body of it. And then you move on to the conclusion at the very end. So you're preparing the audience for the end of the speech. You're presenting any of your final appeals, you're summarizing, closing it up, and you're ending with a clincher or you're tying things back to the introduction with a nice little bow. So if you started the introduction with a story or anecdote, then you can end, the, you can end in the conclusion by referencing back to that story, that anecdote, anecdote, that joke, whatever you happen to start off with. So some ways to gain attention and interest. So tell a story. Refer to the occasion or recent or historical events that are going on, previous speeches. So if one of your classmates gave a speech on something, you can refer back to that. You know, as we heard from Jill, da -da 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 -da, I'm going to expand on that by talking about da -da 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 -da. Um, why you're personally interested in this topic. If you have any startling statistics, an analogy to connect the story to the audience. So why does this matter to the audience? And you can use a quote, a question, or humor, but you do have to be careful about humor because not everyone will have the same sense of humor. There can be cultural differences in humor. Um, so me personally, I have a very dark sense of humor, so not everyone uh, would get that or appreciate that. So I tend not to start off speeches with jokes just because you never know how well those are going to go over. Um, to gain the goodwill of your audience, you have to establish your credibility. And the easiest way to do this, like honestly, first thing off the bat, is how you look and present yourself and how you connect with the audience. So if you are dressed well, you use good eye contact and you are a fluent speaker, so you are uh, pronounce, pronouncing your words correctly as I go and pronounce things wrong, if you're enunciating clearly, if you are varying your tone, so that it's interesting to listen to. So it's not just like sitting here listening to someone talk in monotone for like five or 10 or 20 minutes, right? And you can also get external credibility by citing your sources, by using your sources and saying them out loud. So according to research done by Smith and Johnson in 2017, da 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 da. When you clearly state the purpose, you are stating the thesis of your speech. So your thesis might be, so let's see how dependence on fossil fuel costs you money and how the use of ethanol as a supplement will save you money and save the world from energy dependence. And then previewing the structure, you can go from the purpose right over to the preview to see how we can do this. We, can, we will first do this, secondly we'll do this, third we'll talk about this thing, and to end it, this is how we'll end it. And then people can kind of get a preview, um, a flash forward of what they're going to be seeing and listening to. And then if they have any immediate questions, they can go ahead and jot them down. And then if you answer them in the speech, then all's great. And if not, then they already have that written down. So at the end, they can be like, hey, I had a question about this thing because um, you mentioned it in the preview and then I didn't really get my answer. 
And then in your conclusion, wrap it all up nicely by not introducing any new information. And then following the structure, you can use the same quote or question or by creating a contrast. Like I said, you can tie it back to that same story that you maybe used at the beginning. You can finally finish out the joke, you know, finish out the punchline to conclude just so that it, you know, loops all back together. So we are done with intros and conclusions. Like I said, pretty quick. I don't even know if that took five minutes or not. Um, I guess I'll find out here when I go look at the video. Um, but if you have any questions, shoot me a message on Canvas, shoot me an email. I will be happy to assist you in any way possible. Thanks. See you soon.